This is Coons for Turp Talk with Bruce Posner. 60 minutes of Maryland athletics and your phone calls at 410-823-1812. Now, here's Bruce Posner and Turp Talk. This Wednesday night, the Coons for Turf Talk, as the University of Maryland has the week off in football, and after the past couple weeks, I think they needed a week off to set up for probably the most important game that they'll play this year, and that's at Minnesota. But we're going to open up, we'll get to that later in the segment, we're going to open up with my good buddy Wayne Viner, who was out there with me at Media Day yesterday for the University of Maryland basketball team. And Wayne, I don't know how much you agree with me, but when people asked me last night how it went and what I thought, I said the following, that I have never walked out of a media day except during the championship year when I felt better about a team than I did yesterday. And I'd like to hear your thought on that. I think that this is a much more athletic basketball team. Many more ball players out there. I mean, there's guys out there that can play. Viner Four Gates makes your company work. Well, what I love about it, I love, I love the experience that's out there with the the grad players and Fats Russell and uh, you and me were both absolutely blown away by. Xavier Green, who I really went into the media day not expecting much, but uh, there's so much experience and leadership on this team. It reminds you of some of the uh, maybe the the Villanova teams that have capitalized on having seniors around, and uh, the UConn teams that capitalized on that. This team greatly reminds me of that. How about you? Well, here's the thing. There's a lot of spare parts out there that they have to make into a team. So when you talk about a team that's seven new players, five transfers and two freshmen that come in, how can you put those guys together? So I'm going to look back a couple weeks ago. I went to dinner with, well, I just thought I was going to go with Dante Scott. And he brought Hakeem Hart, Eric Ayala, and Fats Russell. Now, Fats is the point guard that transferred in from Rhode Island. Those guys are tight. I mean, they've known each other. And I'm going to get that interview up on Turp Talk, where I had Dante Scott explain to you yesterday how these guys have known each other since they were little kids. Now, that's not, you know, we're older. So that would have been 40 years ago for us or 50 years ago. These guys are talking about being little kids like seven years ago, eight years ago. So for the last eight years, these guys have played together in high school. They played AAU. They've seen each other in tournaments. They played against Fats Russell when he was with Rhode Island last year. So this Philly four is really tight. You bring in Q, or Kudus Wahab, who's a seven-foot center from Georgetown, and he seems to get along with those guys pretty well. That is a heck of a solid five. Then you go to Xavier Green, who's a defensive stopper for ODU, and Matt Brady worked on his shot. I put up the interview with Danny Manning, and in the background, Xavier Green's shooting jump shots. I must add 10 comments that who's the guy in the background of the video because he hit 10 threes <laughs> in a row. Well, the funniest so, thing about that is, Wayne, a lot of guys, uh, even you can hit jump shots when nobody's guarding you and you're by yourself. But in the scrimmage, this guy was banging them home left and right. I, I, I could not believe it because they were going... Let me tell you, it's competitive out there on those scrimmages. It was a war out there. Uh, uh, what's his name? Ian Martinez got poked in the eye. His uh, contact came out. And uh, let's before we break down each player, because that's how I want to do it with you, we'll open up with Turgeon's comments. And uh, he said it's the oldest team he has had to date. And his experience goes back a long way. Tons of leadership. And the returning players have welcomed in the new players. And I think we got all that all that knowledge from the player interviews, probably even more so than hearing it from the coach. I, I think that the other thing that impressed me 
was the fact that he's got two coaches as his assistants. A lot of coaches don't like to put that, uh, bring in other guys like Danny Manning and uh, Brady. Of course, Brady's been there for a while. But uh, I think the wealth of knowledge from the coaching staff in comparison to what he's had, I think it's unbelievable, to tell you the truth, with a guy like Danny, Man- Danny Manning, who's if been Danny a Manning, Danny Manning really wants to help out there. I mean, we saw him coaching the big men, and he knows he knows what he's doing with those guys. And you're talking about a guy who was the head coach at Tulsa? That's the first time we had him on Turp Talk was like 10 years ago. He was the head coach at Tulsa. We interviewed him. Then he's the head coach at Wake Forest. And now he's standing there coaching Q and uh, Juju, which is Julian Reese from Baltimore, who looked fantastic. Uh, I think it's a big upgrade to have – Danny Manning is your big man's coach. All right, let's go down the line. I uh, got it here by numbers. So, we'll, you know, through through this segment, whatever time we have, uh, we'll take a look at each player that we feel is going to be, be significant. Uh, number one, and he's number one in, with uniform, is James Graham. And uh, it, James Graham, if you remember, was a shocking entry into the team last year. Relate his story about his first game, Wayne. His first game, many of you listen to the show, watch these games as, as often and as uh, in much detail as Bruce and I. But the first game, he's playing Indiana. And he just came out of high school three weeks before. Maryland had some injuries. And you can see this interview on Turp Talk. We'll get it posted. And he says he got a rebound, and the center from Indiana bumped into him. And to paraphrase, sort of knocked him silly. And that's his, his first play. And he said, oh, my goodness, this is a different league. Yeah, and there was, was no man. foul. And there was no foul. That's the only thing no. he left out. Right. So <laughs> welcome to the Big Ten. And you pointed out, because he didn't play that much, but you, when you were talking to him, you pointed out and asked him what that experience meant as far as getting ready for this year. Bruce, what did he tell you? Yeah, he said it meant a world. He doesn't have to go through that initial learning curve about stepping up a level where the game is much faster and in the Big Ten, it's so much stronger that it's unbelievable. All right, let's move on. Fats Russell. You know, I love Fats Tur- Russell. Yeah, man. Turgeon Fats? said he's like Anthony Cowan. He didn't want to say he's Anthony Cowan. But the first thing I noticed when I saw him on the court, I said, well, the guy reminds you of Anthony Cowan. And uh, he's demonstrative. He's a graduate student. He is definitely a leader on the court. He barks out defensive signals. Uh, He is one tough hombre. I think he is guaranteed to start in the backcourt with Eric Aiello. Well, I think that Fats Russell is the key to this team because of what you just said. It's his personality. He is the leader. He is the guy that you want. He is a quarterback's mentality. He is the shortstop or the center fielder. He's the guy. And I, I think Cowan was great. Um, he, he wasn't as sunshiny as some would like. I think Mello was fantastic, but Mello was sort of his own guy. This guy is the leader, just done. And I think that's the type of player that you need if you're really going to succeed down through the season when this gets tough, is to have the guy on your side. And we've seen players like this, in Maryland before, Gravis was the guy. I'm not saying it's Gravis Vasquez, but he has the personality to lead this team uh, outwardly, inwardly, in the locker room, on the floor, calling defense, running the offense. I am super impressed with Fats Russell. Uh, without question, number five, Eric Ayala. We all know about Eric. He's been great. He's uh, Is he going to run the point? It'll be him and uh, Fats probably is a combo. But one thing I did notice about Eric yesterday when we were doing the video shoot, and Wayne and myself got to stay for the entire practice, but after the practice was over, it almost seemed like another practice started. I mean, everybody was out there shooting, and I have to tell you, I sat there, Wayne, I'm not exaggerating. I saw Eric Ayala make probably about 15 out of 16 shots at the top of the key behind the three-point line where the the uh, the managers were just throwing him the ball on the run and he was popping. 
look, guys get better. He knows what he's got to do to get to the next level. And uh, Eric Ayala is going to be a leader on this team, another leader. We go to number 10, Julian Reese from Baltimore out of St. Francis. Talk about his experience playing against Q. Q is a full-sized NBA-looking center. He's a Big Ten center. Julian Reese is a freshman. This isn't football, but the football analogy of when you bring in your senior lineman and they play the freshman lineman, no matter how good the freshman is, you can tell he's up against a big guy. What did Julian tell you about playing against Q? He said it was like playing against a real man. He said, I felt like I was playing against an NBA guy who was 26 years old. He was so strong. And we noticed in the scrimmage, unfortunately, Julian, who's really not a center, was guarding uh, Caduce Wahab. And it was like it was like a feather compared to him. But this is what I love about uh, Julian. He's got a shot. He's got a nice finger roll, left-handed. He's got a nice shot practiced, a lot of threes. He's got a long way to go to be a consistent three-point shooter, but he's extremely cerebral, all right? And Turgid did mention in the pregame intro, in the uh, press conference, that he, Julian is way ahead of where he thought he would be. That's a big plus for Julian Reese. I do believe he possibly could be the first big man off the bench, don't you? I think so, and the the competition is the transfer from Arizona State. But I like yeah, Julian has some offensive skills, and no, he's not going to be shooting the ball from twenty four feet. But I love the way he snapped the rebounds. I I, I like the aggressiveness that he went after the ball. Uh, we got four guys who are sort of Philly tough. It's nice to have some Baltimore tough out there. And he certainly fills the role. And now Xavier Green, number one. This guy could right now be a, uh, a guy on ESPN. He is so, uh, I don't know what the right word is, he really has his act together as a leader. This is another grad student. Coach Bruce Schindler, who is uh, Schindler, who is an addition to the staff this year, and talked about how he he had to make an adjustment from the uh, SEC to the Big Ten. That's all up on Turp Talk. It might have been one of our best Turp Talk video days ever, Wayne. I mean, it, you know, because of COVID, you don't have that. You don't have people flying in for media day anymore. And it was really just the locals. And nobody's more local than you and me. All right. So we really had a great uh, a great time with it. But the way he spoke and the way he played, he was clearly the star of the scrimmage. And Schindler said he's not surprised because of his acumen at Old Dominion. But this kid's got game way. Uh, I mean, I, how are you going to keep him off the court? Well, uh, you're going to need – so I know we're going player by player, but i got to – roll back to sitting in press row with Bruce and Bruce had a lot of experience in putting teams how how these teams are built he's going through and counting off of the player's score sheet how many centers do we have and how many guards and that's that's great for right now to actually figure out who's supposed to play where but as the conversation continued I said you have to when this gets to March you're not going to worry if the guy's a center or a forward. You're going to put the five best players out there. And if you do that with Maryland, you might not say that, you know, maybe Q gets in foul trouble or something. Who are you going to go with next? And if you look at that five, considering everybody stays healthy and they're still there, you probably got Eric Ayala. You got Fats. You probably have Hakeem Hart in that. You might have Graham. You're going to have Dante Scott. You might have Xavier Green. You got Q. And and then we'll see who else steps up. But you got seven guys who would probably fit in your five best. And that's where Maryland's grown. Last year, they, they didn't really have the size. And their, their five best was putting Dante Scott at center and throwing four guards out there and having more cell play power forward. If you take the five best players still standing in March, they're bigger. They're seniors. They all they can shoot. 
I don't want to get ahead of myself because I just came off of being 4-0 and in football and dreaming of what could come next, and we saw what happened next. So I don't want to get out there ahead of ourselves, but there really does seem to be seven to eight legit ball players out there, regardless of position. And when it gets to March, you'll see if Ian Martinez fits into that. You really have, uh, I'll take Bruce's high hopes that this is one of the better player-by-player teams that Maryland's had in recent memory. Well, you know, what struck me is that uh, is we go from player to player to player, and it was like we're climbing a hill, and we finally got to, I'm not skipping anybody, but we finally got to uh, the, the big two guys, and that's Dante Scott, who is so ecstatic that he won't have to play the five anymore and have to guard Hunter Dickerson and guys like Luca Garza that he can play his natural power forward position because we got the stud at center. Kadus Wahab, I'm telling you, everybody who's listening out there, we haven't had a guy like this, all right? Yeah, Bruno was kind of like this, but I think this guy is way past where Bruno was right now. I think he's got tremendous inside moves. He's uh, he's strong as a he's strong as a bully. I think he averaged uh, eleven rebounds or whatever for Georgetown. He's been on the big stage, and to a man, every one of these guys said they came to Maryland because of Mark Turgeon and Brady and Danny Manning, and because Maryland is always in the spotlight on ESPN and the Big Ten Network, and everything else. Don't ever think, you know, that that doesn't work in their favor. These guys wanted to come to Maryland. I think Maryland will start to have even re- more rewards from the transfer portal. Mm-hmm. Wayne, you're friends with him, and and you know him pretty well. Talk about Dante Scott. Well, yeah, I've known and spoken to Dante, I said we went out uh, a couple weeks ago. He you were help, to be said it straight, you were helping or trying to help with the uh, calamity that hit his family from the recent hurricane where they lost everything they had, and there were some fun, go go to the Fundy pages, and Wayne was involved with that, and uh, right. go ahead. Look, he's the heart and soul of this. He's the, he is the combo player. He's... To me, he's the glue that got Fats Russell here because they wanted to play back with his friend for his last go-round. He's the guy who shoots 43% from beyond the arc and led the Big Ten and three-point shooting percentage. He's the guy that Maryland counted on when they needed a basket, when they needed a rebound. He's not the most vocal guy. He's certainly come a long way in his stage presence. I think he enjoys media day now. Uh, he has grown tremendously in both basketball and, and people skills in his time at Maryland. And if there's going to be your star player who's not the point guard, I'm going to pick Dante Scott because he does everything for Maryland. He is their everything guy. He's bigger. He's stronger. He's faster. He can jump higher. He, he's really working on his game, and he loves this team. He loves these guys. And like I said, when I did the event with Dante, I expected Dante to show up, but his three amigos, which make up the Philly Four, come along. Those relationships, when these games are on the line, I think is going to make the difference for Maryland. There's no and they don't have. Maybe James Grant could fill this role, but the one guy they don't have, you know, we're talking about guys they don't have two of. They don't have two centers. They certainly don't have two Dante Scotts. So there's two guys that there's just, not really a replacement for on this team, and it makes them stand out even more. One thing they do have, no matter what happens, is they have uh, experience to the end of the degree. So if if you're putting me up against the wall, and you know I love to do this, and people always put their foot and feet in their mouth when they do this, uh, this is the way I look at a potential starting lineup. I want to hear what you say. We're going to have Fats and I yellow at the guard. We're going to have Dante and uh, Caduce as the big man, Caduce in the center. And I think the fifth man that makes that makes that squad, some people say it could be James Graham. I haven't seen enough of him to say that. 
But I do know who I saw enough of yesterday, and I'm shocked to say that I would not be surprised if Xavier Green breaks his way into that lineup after what I saw yesterday. Maybe he just had a good day, but that's not what the coaches were saying. I think that you could see him in that starting lineup. Uh, that would be three transfers, all right? Now, it could be Hakeem Hart to start with because the, it's, he's been with us. He's now six foot eight, so he kind of plays that swing role perfectly. But uh, guys out there, I have to tell you, and Wayne, I, you know, I've been to a lot of these. I've been to a uh, – you always leave somewhat positive. I'm more positive than this with this one than so many teams that I've seen with Maryland. You know, even when Gravis had his great years, you know, who I mean, look who he had at center. I mean, he, he really never had a really powerful team. This team, this team from stem to stern, and yeah, they miss Aaron Wiggins, but – they don't, Aaron Wiggins, you know, he'd have to work his way into, like, dominating this team. Do you agree with that? This team is just too spread out and too good. You're not going to have one well, guy dribbling the ball looking for a shot every time on this team. It's not going to happen. That's what we, I agree that when you, from yesterday, that you're going to say this team isn't going to fall into these 60-point games where it's just one guy. I think there's enough firepower. You're going to go to the bench, and I'm going to say Hakeem Hart's going to start. You're going to bring in Xavier Green. You're going to bring in uh, Julian James Reese. Graham, Graham, Julian Reese. I mean, there there are Ian players. Martinez, and there's, uh, there's your X factor. I think Graham is solidly in this. Ian Martinez transfers in from Utah. He's got speed. He's got style. He wants to make the splash. They are, and I know we're late in the segment here. We're we got a late. bunch of guys <laughs> that have not played under the spotlight that really, as you said, want to be at Maryland. They want to see Comcast full again or Xfinity Center. They want to feel that energy where it's so loud and so rocking that you can't get your camera to focus because you're bouncing around because it's a raucous place. And they, they want to experience that. And they come here to win. They didn't come here to sit and wait. In closing, you got guys that came here for their last dance. They want to win. They want to win now. I think this could be a magical year. I think that in, 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 we got to go. But in the past, when we've had transfers come in, they were always, and I'm not criticizing them, but they were the Me Too kind of guys, guys looking for the next step. I didn't get that feeling with these guys. These guys understand that in order for them to be seen, in order for them to be successful, they got to be seen during March Madness. And I tell you, my confidence level is at an extreme high. Wayne, we're so far over. All I can do is say goodbye. And we'll be back in a few minutes. I'll get the football in the third segment. Wayne, thanks so much for coming on. Great work on the videos. Go to TurpTalk.com. Back here in a few minutes on Coos Ford Turf Talk.